in the previous class we were going through the different types of bond returns returns from bonds or debentures there are different types of returns the first one is coupon rate coupon rate is the actual annual interest that you get from the bond that is the interest rate which will be specified at the time of the issue of the bond is known as the coupon interest rate that interest rate will be printed on the bond certificate now current yield is the second type of return current yield is the comparison between the interest received annually and the current market price of the bond so we will calculate the current yield by comparing the current market price and the interest of the bond therefore the formula to calculate the current yield is annual interest divided by current market price into 100 now what is the third bond return that is spot interest rate spot interest rate is the return received from a zero coupon bond or a pure discount bond expressed on an annualized basis that is for uh, for a zero coupon bond interest is not given to the investor annually instead the debenture or the bond is made available at a deep discount and then redeemed at par the difference is known as the profit so this difference amount is broken down into such a level that we can find out the percentage of returns every year what would have been the percentage of returns if we had received the interest annually so that is known as the spot interest rate then the next category is yield to maturity and yield to call yield to maturity is the return if the investor had held the bond till the maturity date and yield to call is the return uh, that the investor would get if he redeemed the callable bonds after holding it for a fixed period of time that is in case of callable bonds the investor has got the option to redeem the bonds at an earlier date than the maturity date so we'll calculate the percentage of returns we are going to redeem it at an earlier date so we'll compare the yield to call and the yield to maturity and choose the uh, one with the higher interest or the higher rate of return so let's work out some problems to understand this better JL Limited has a 14% debenture with a face value of rupees 100 that matures at par in 15 years. The debenture is callable in 5 years at rupees 114. It currently sells for rupees 105. Calculate each of the following for this debenture. So JL Limited is issuing a bond that has got a face value of 100. and a coupon rate of 14% and the maturity period is after 15 years it has got a callable option in 5 years after 5 years the investor has got the option to redeem the bond by paying back the uh, by receiving back the amount so the debenture is callable in 5 years at rupees 114 it is redeemed at a premium it currently sells for rupees 105 the current market price is also given in the question Now we are required to calculate the current yield, the yield to call, and yield to maturity. So, what is the current yield? The formula for calculating current yield is interest divided by the current market price. So, the interest is fourteen percent each of hundred. So, hundred into fourteen by hundred will give you fourteen. So, fourteen is the interest divided by the current market price as given in the question. The current market price is hundred and five into hundred. So, you will get thirteen point three three percent each is the current yield. The bond is giving you a return which is less than the coupon rate of return. The actual return from the bond is less than the coupon rate. Thirteen point three three. So in such a case, the bond will have to be given at a discounted rate if you want anyone to purchase those bonds because it is offering a interest rate which is less than the market interest rate. So the second part of the question is to calculate the yield to call or the YTC. 
Now the YTC, the formula to calculate YTC is the same as the one to calculate yield to maturity. So the market price is equal to the cash flow. The C represents the interest rate, which is the cash flow, annual cash flow. And TV is the terminating value or the maturity value. So this is yield to call. We have to calculate the percentage of return, required return if the bond is to be redeemed within five, after five years. So we have the formula where we will take into consideration the interest as well as the termination value and divide it by one plus YTC, the whole raise to one and one plus YTC, the whole raise to five. Now we know that the current market price is 105 as given in the question. So we have to find that percentage of YTC which makes uh, the value on the equal sign same on both sides. So we have to find something that makes 105 the, when we solve the equation. So let us assume that the YTC is 15 percentage. Okay, we can only do trial and error method here. So if you are going to assume that the YTC is 15 percentage, then what do we have to do? We'll cross multiply 14 into one plus YTC, the whole raised to five. That is 14 into present value annuity factor for five years at 15 percentage plus 114. We know the TV value. I have not given it in the, sorry, I'm not substituted in the formula. The termination value, they said, if we are going to call that bond within a period of five years, see, debenture is callable in five years at rupees 114. So we are going to hold the bond till the fifth year and then redeem it. Then we are going to get a termination value of 114 because it will be redeemed at a premium. So 114 is the value. So 114 into present value factor of five years at 15 percentage. We have taken five years because after five years, we are going to redeem the bond. So we will now look into the different tables and find out the respective values. So the first part is rupees 14 into present value annuity factor for five years at 15. So we're going to take the present value annuity table. See the first one is the present value annuity table. And for five years, the value marked in orange shade is to be taken into consideration. See, for five years at 15 percentage, the present value for annuity is 3.3522. That is what we have done 14 into 3.3522 plus 114. Okay, so the termination value is 114 at the end of the fifth year. So 114 into present value factor of five years at 15 percentage. So we are going to the second table. It's not the annuity table. It is the present value factor table. So the present value factor for pairs is for five years at 15 percentage is 0 0.4972. So that is the value we have taken here. Now we'll solve this and we'll get the answer as 103, which is less than the market price of 105. So we need a value which reaches uh, close to 105. So that means we'll have to reduce the percentage of the YTC so that the amount will increase closer to 105. So 15% did not work out. So we are going to take a lesser rate as the YTC. Let's assume 14% is the YTC. If 14% is the YTC, then we'll calculate the um, amount in this way, rupees 14 into present value annual factor of five years at 14 percentage plus 114 into present value factor of five years at 14 percentage. So we again go into the table. So 15 percent didn't work out, we are going to go for 14 percentage. So calculate the, take into consideration the values marked in blue. So five years at 14 percentage for the present value annuity, that is 3.433. That has been taken 14 into 3.433. Now the next one 114 into present value factor of five years at 14 percentage. That is 0 0.5194. 0 0.5194. Now we'll solve this and we'll get it as 107.24. So we know that is a value that is higher than the market price. So we are going to use the interpolation formula and derive it an average. 
so a percentage that is the value is somewhere between 15 and 14 percentage so we are going to use the interpolation formula so the interpolation formula is the we'll compare both the interest rate we have taken the lesser interest rate that is 14 percent is to be shown first 14 less 107.24 107.24 is the value that you got when you took for yts as 14 percent so 107.24 minus 105 which is the market price divided by again the value that you got when you took the lesser M rate of ytc that is 107.24 minus the value that you got when you took 15 percentage as ytc that is a higher value so 100 and higher interest rate so 103.61 whole into 15 minus 14 which is the two rates of ytc that you considered so solving that we will get the answer as 14.62 is the yield to call if you are going to call that bond after five years the return is 14.62 the actual coupon rate is 14 percentage Now we move on to the third part, the yield to maturity. See, yield to maturity and yield to curve are both the same formulas. Only thing is the denominator will show YTC. Here it will show YTM. So again, we have the values. The cash flow divided by 1 plus YTM, the whole raised to T, plus the termination value divided by 1 plus YTM, the whole raised to N. We know the C value and the TV value. So the C value, that is the cash flow, the interest is 14, coupon interest rate. TV is a termination value. If you are going to hold that bond for 15 years, it's going to be redeemed at par value. The par value is 100. So we have taken TV as 100. Now YTM, 1 plus YTM, the whole raised to 1. And the other denominator is 1 plus YTM, the whole raised to 15 because we have to hold it for 15 years. Now again, through trial and error method, we are trying to find a YTM uh, rate that will make the value 105 on the right hand side of the equation also sorry equal sign also so rupees 14 into 1 plus ytm the whole raised to 15 that is rupees 14 into present value annuity factor of 15 years at 15 percentage and rupees 100 into present value factor of 15 years at 15 percentage by going through the uh, tables we'll be able to find out the value at 5.84 and 0 0.122 we'll find the answer to that and we'll get 94.15 as the percentage which is a value which is very low than 105 so we are going to reduce the ytm percentage we are going to assume that it is 13 percentage so rupees 14 into present value annuity factor of 15 years and 13 percentage plus rupees 100 into present value factor of 15 years and 13 percentage we will solve that we'll get 106 so we know the value is somewhere in between 15% and 13%. So using interpolation formula, the lower value is taken first, that is 13 plus the value that you got when you took 13% as YTM, that is 106.46 minus the market value as given in the question. Market price is 105. Divide by again 106.46 minus the value that you got when you took 15% as your YTM, that is 94.15. The whole into the higher YTM minus the lower YTM, uh, that is 15 minus 13. So by solving that, we'll get the YTM as 13.24. So if you're going to hold it till the maturity date, the return that you get is 13.24. If you're going to redeem it after five years, the return that you get is 14.62. So it's better to redeem the bond after five years instead of holding it for 15 years. So that was the first question. The second question. A person owns rupees thousand face value bond with five years to maturity. The bond makes annual interest payments of 80. The bond is currently priced at rupees 960. The market price is given. Given that the market interest rate is 10, should the investor hold or sell the bond? So the investor, we are required to help the investor in making a buy or sell decision. So we have to calculate the intrinsic value and then compare it with the market value or the market price to identify whether to buy or sell the security. 
So let's see. To calculate the intrinsic value, again, we are going to calculate the interest of the bond plus the maturity value divided by a discount rate or the required rate of return, which is given as uh, 10 percentage. That is the market interest rate. So you're going to require a return, which is the same as the market interest rate. And currently the market interest rate is 10 percentage. So what are we going to do? We have to calculate the intrinsic value and then compare it with the current market price of 960. So the interest rate is 80 divided by 1 plus 0 0.10 plus the maturity value that is 1000 because the bond is going to be redeemed at par. We're going to assume as such. Then divide it by 1 plus 0 0.10, the whole raised to n. n is the number of years, and in the question, the n value is 5. So let's see. 80 into 1 plus 0 0.10, the whole raised to 5. That is 80 into present value annuity factor of 5 years at 10 percentage plus 1000 into present value factor of 5 years at 10 percentage. We'll go to the tables and pick out the values and we'll get 80 into 3.7908 plus 1000 into 0 0.6209. So we'll get the value as 924.16. So that is the intrinsic value of the bond. Now we are going to compare it with the market price which is 960. The original value is 924.16, but in the market, the bond is available at 960 rupees. That means it is overpriced. Okay, the actual value is 924. We are creating 960 in the market, so it is an overpriced bond. It is best to sell the bond. So, moving on to the next question an investor purchases rupees. 5,555 or oh, purchases for rupees 5,555 a zero coupon bond whose face value is rupees 1,000 and maturity period is three years. Calculate the spot interest rate of the bond. Now the spot interest rate is nothing but the annualized value of the returns of the bond. <clears throat> so a bond whose original value is rupees 1,000 <clears throat> is now available in the market for 5555 which is a very discounted price and on the maturity period after three years they will get back rupees 1000. So we have to calculate the spot interest rate. <clears throat> so we know the present value as 500 5555. We know the future value is 7000. We can divide it plus 1 plus k the whole raised to 3. And by solving the equation, we can calculate the k value. So we need to find the k value, which is the spot interest rate. Now we can rearrange the equations. 1 plus k the whole raised to 3 is equal to 7000 divided by 5555. Now we will find out the we answer to this as 8 percentage when we solve the entire equation. So the investor's spot interest rate is 8 percentage. That is annually he is earning a interest rate of or a, a return rate of 8 percentage <clears throat> for this particular zero coupon bond. Next question, a bond pays interest annually and sells for rupees 835. It has six years left to maturity and a par value of rupees 1000. What is its coupon rate if its promised YTM is 12 percentage? So we're going to calculate the answer, okay? So how to find out the solution? So from the question, we are required to calculate the coupon rate. They are not revealing what is the interest rate which is being paid or the annual cash flow of the bond. They only told that the market price is 835, the maturity period is six years, uh, after six years, and the par value is 1000, which is a terminated value. We need to require, we need to calculate the coupon rate if the YTM is 12%. So we'll find out the coupon rate. 
Market price is equal to the cash flow divided by 1 plus YTM the whole raise to T plus the termination value divided by 1 plus YTM the whole raise to N. Market price is 835 is equal to the C value is not given. That is the one which we need to calculate. The YTM value has been given as 12 percentage. So we'll take it as 0 0.12. The termination value is 1000 because it's going to be redeemed at par and the TV value is 1000. So cross through cross multiplication, C into present value annuity factor of six years at 12 percentage, plus 1000 into present value factor of six years at 12 percentage, we'll go to the annuity table as well as the present value table and we'll take the values. So we got it as 4.1314C plus 506.6, now we can take that 506 to the other side of the equal sign. So it will become a negative one. 835 minus 506.6 is equal to 4.1114C. So 4.1114C is 328.4. Now the C value is equal to 328 divided by 4.1114 because it was a multiplication on the other side of the equation. Equal table. Now when we bring it to the right hand side of the equal symbol, it will become a division. So the C value is 79.88. That is the coupon rate, the annual coupon rate is 79.88. So we calculated the coupon rate, we calculated the spot interest rate, we calculated the yield to maturity, yield to call, as well as the current yield. So all type of bond returns has been discussed through these questions. Now we need to find out what are the different type of bond risks. Mainly there are two types of bond risk. There's a default risk as well as a interest rate risk. See the default risk is the risk of non-payment by the company. There's a chance that the company that issued the bonds has gone into loss and they are not paying the interest and the principal amount. So this type of risk is known as default risk. To avoid a default risk, we can approach credit rating agencies. So these credit rating agencies will rate the credit worthiness of the companies. And if we choose a company with a good credit rating, maybe a triple A or an A plus plus plus, then we'll be able to reduce this default risk to a great extent. So one of the risk of bonds is default risk. The other one is interest rate risk. Interest rate risk is the risk that you have to face because of the changes in the market interest rate. See, so when we are issuing the bond, the coupon rate will be the same as the market interest rate. And the coupon rate will remain same throughout the life period of the bond. If the bond is for a five-year period, then the entire five years, the coupon rate of the bond will be the same. But the market interest rate will keep on fluctuating according to the demand and supply conditions. So if your market interest rate is higher than your coupon interest rate, that is your bond is being uh, is offering a rate of return of 10 percentage, but in the market you are getting a rate of return of 12 percentage, then the demand for your bond will go down because if, an, if another person who wants to purchase a bond is going to buy a bond from the market, they are going to get it at 12%. If they are going to purchase your bond, your bond is going to give only 10%. So what will you have to do? You will have to reduce the price of your bond. You will have to give the bond at a discount rate if you have to find a buyer for that bond. So you are suffering loss in such a way. But at the same time, if the market interest rate is higher than the coupon rate, you can always reinvest the coupon interest rate at the market interest. That is, if you're getting a 10 percentage return, say rupees uh, 1000 as the return, if the uh, coupon rate is 10 percent, if you're getting 1000 rupees, then you can invest that in the market in some security at 12 percentage now. So you will need getting a gain in such a way, but at the same time, if you are selling that bond, then you will have to offer it at a discount, so you're facing loss as well. Now, what is the other way? See, if coupon interest rate is higher than the market interest rate, what if the market interest rate goes below 10 percentage? Okay, so in the market, the interest rate now available is 8%. Then you'll get a coupon rate at 
you will get the thousand rupees as your interest. You're going to invest in the market and you're going to be able to invest only in securities, which is offering you 8% each of returns. So in that way, you're suffering a small loss. But at the same time, since your bond is offering a rate of return, which is higher than the market interest rate, there will be buyers, there will be more demand for your bond. Then you will be able to sell your bond at a premium, that is at a higher value than the par value. So you will get a profit in such a way as well. So this is the interest rate risk. So there is a point of time in which if you hold that bond for that particular period and then sell that bond, then you can eliminate the interest rate risk. That is at that point of time, the reinvestment risk and the price risk will be zero. That is the return that you get from the reinvestment and the loss that you get by selling that bond will be offset. So the loss that you face will be zero. That is what is lost or what is lost on reinvestment is exactly compensated by your capital gain on the sale of the bond and vice versa. So what is the period till which you have to hold that bond so that you will not have uh, face interest rate risk in which the reinvestment risk and the price risk will offset each other. That period is known as the bond duration. So we will calculate the bond duration and hold a bond till the uh, period that we get through that calculation. And when we sell the bond after the end of at the end of the period, then we can offset the reinvestment risk and the price risk. That is the interest rate risk can be uh, reduced by calculating the bond duration. So these are the two types of risks of a bond. Thank you.